Hola, it's Carpaccio with the weekly Pele Report. It's a little cloudy out here on Chapman's Peak. Astrology for the Soul, February 7th, 2024. This is Hout Bay. Oh, yeah. The moon is definitely waning, waning, waning. I don't know if you've seen her, but yep. She's in Capricorn now. Tomorrow, Thursday, she is going to go into Aquarius. And we are going to have a new moon. This is a powerful, intense new moon because what? Because why? Look at these. Look at these amazing. There is like every color of the rainbow in these buds. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Square Uranus. New moon square Uranus. It's at 20 degrees, 41 minutes of Aquarius. And Uranus is down there at 19 degrees of Taurus. So we are getting a surprise. Oh yeah, there's never a dull moment these days. There's a lot going on that I want to talk to you about. We just had that Mercury conjunct Pluto. I'm sure you felt that one. And if you thought you, if you didn't feel that one, you will be feeling Mars enters Aquarius on Monday and conjuncts Pluto on Tuesday. And then Venus comes along to conjunct Pluto on February 17th. We're having Mercury, then Mars, then Venus. Very powerful Plutonian underworld conjunctions. I will be talking to you about that. The Venus is trying Uranus today. Today, nice day for a hike. Who knows what I'll find up here. Sun squares Uranus tomorrow. Moon moves into Pisces on Saturday. Hits a, a Saturn. On Sunday, she comes up to uh, conjunct with Neptune. And then by Monday, she goes into Aries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a nice spot. I, it would be nice if I could have that for the background. But we are going to get into a place where there's what? No wind. <laughs> we'll see about that. But I'd like to get up to the top of there, maybe give you a shot of what's on the other side. All right, this could be a short Pele report because I'm about to slide down the freaking mountain. <sighs> I've set up three different times. It's windy all over the place. Blah, 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 quack, quack. Oh my goodness. Life is so hard these days. This is Nut Book Beach. Check it out. And that is going all the way down to the point. It is amazing up here. You got to stay to the end of the report there because I, I did a 180 from the top of Chapman Peak, which is like way higher than the introduction and higher than this. I had to come down because it was too windy up on the peak. But let's talk about some astrology while we're at it. <laughs> oh boy, uh, these can be some challenging times. I wanted to just give you a little bit of a uh, backdrop, a uh, backdrop, um, because what's happening now is not just what's happening now. It is we want to have a context, and the context for this is two things. Uh, I, I think that number one, we want to look at Saturn. Uh, Saturn is now at seven degrees of Pisces and it entered Pisces last March and it went all the way up to seven degrees in June. Then it turned retrograde and went all the way back to zero degrees by September. No, I think it may be uh, even October. And now it's coming back for the third pass. So there's this threefold pass of Saturn in Pisces. And so a lot of us are getting 
you know, what really came up last June. Last June, Saturn was in the same place that it is right now. And you want to really look at what was going on last June. Any choices, decisions, changes, contracts, commitments, breakups, new people, you know, I mean, now is kind of like the results, okay, of what has been going on for you. It, you've, you know, made changes over this last year, and now Saturn is going to go forward again into new territory, new degrees. It's going to go all the way up to 19 degrees, okay, by this June. So we are, you know, anything from 7 to 19 degrees, it's new, 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 new territory. And, and Saturn in Pisces is really bringing us some challenges uh, because, you know, it has to do with like really um, two things, either making the dream reality, the Piscean dream either comes into reality or we see that it is an illusion. We see that it is a dream. We see that it is not meant for third dimensional manifestation and we need to let it go. And this is what is coming up now, I think for so many people is this really, uh, and we'll see it with the Sabian symbol, this a uh, lot of disillusionment because you know, there are some things that you know, we can really pull off we can really, you know, with our willpower and with our ego and with our desire, we can make a lot of things happen. But when it deals with Uranus, Pluto, Neptune, even Chiron, these unconscious soul uh, represent, you know, representatives of our higher spiritual nature, our little ego willpower and our little desires really come secondary. And that's where we become students. We become humbled and we learn. So Saturn moving through Pisces is really humbling. Uh, it's humbling humanity. It's humbling people. It's, uh, it's really showing us, uh, you know, how much peach fuzz we are on the planet of Gaia and how Gaia has her own evolutionary path and we're hitchhikers and not quite as uh, you know big deals as we might sometimes think wish hope want and why am I saying this now I'm saying this now because we have this new moon square Uranus and Uranus is the great waker upper <laughs> it's the great liberator but it is the alarm clock and it is you know, a big dose of sudden shocking reality that says, okay, you know, no more sleepwalking, uh, no more daydreaming, uh, you know, electric taser, shock, shock, sometimes traumatic, but like wake yourself up. You are, you know, you are living in a fantasy land. <laughs> And this has been happening, you know, uh, for the series of new moons. You know, they've all been aspecting Uranus. But this one is a square. Third quarter square. And that third quarter square has a lot of consciousness with it. Next, we just had... Mercury descend down into Pluto and now we're having Mars descend down into Pluto. This is a movement down into the underworld and that underworld requires letting go. Letting go of illusions, maybe letting go of attachments, letting go of desires, letting go of what we thought was true or who we thought we were or where we thought we were going, particularly with Mars. Mars is my path, my action, my direction, where I think I'm going. And now it's coming around to Pluto. 
And this Pluto, you know, it's going into Aquarius. So, you know, we're going to have Sun, Moon, Mercury, Mars, and Pluto in Aquarius. And then Venus is going to come up. Woo! <laughs> it is going to be really beautiful. This, this is... I. I have to say there is a little bit of a preparation. We don't want to get too, you know, too down about everything because there is going to be a beautiful Venus Mars conjunction traveling right along through Aquarius, which is going to, you know, it's like we let go of the old and it is replaced with a new. But there is that hanging in between into the void over the threshold into a new room like you know you like you move into a new house you don't really know what it's going to be like you move into a new relationship you don't really know what it's going to be like you you know you move into a new country you don't really know what it's going to be like but there's that transit so it's this transitional point where we have to let go of the known the familiar the secure and live in complete trust of Gaia, of ourselves, of our souls being connected to the law of one, the tapestry of life. And that when we let go of, you know, this reality, a new reality will present itself. That is an upgrade. And, and you know, it's... It's really challenging. It can be really challenging to let go of places, people, things, animals, friends, jobs that we have loved. So it can be a very, you know, it's, it's very, it can be heartbreaking, but it can be heart opening. I'm going to try to find a little picture of Momo. Uh, it's my daughter's dog, Momo, that she's had for a few years now. And uh, she's apparently eaten some rat poison and is bleeding. And they don't know if she's going to make it. And, you know, you just have this love, especially for dogs. I mean, dogs, that they have such unconditional love for us. And they're so innocent and helpless. And, you know, plants and animals are like that. You know, dogs and cats, we can just do so much love. And there's so many things in the world that we can't control. There's so many wars and so much suffering and pain and things that, you know, are getting taken away from us. So if you can, you know, send loving energy, send prayers, send meditations to Momo. They said they're supposed to know in the next 24 hours if she's going to make it or not. And just feeling into the grief of the loss. We're, we are human beings. And, you know, this Pluto, Mars, you know, this Saturn moving into Pisces, through Pisces, it's really showing us our vulnerabilities. It's like, you know, this humbling is also that, yeah, we can really be hurt. And it's not always sweet and dreams and, you know, walks through gardens. Life can be pretty difficult. It's really something I've met a lot of people since I've been here. And there are so many people that are going through some of the hardest times of their life and then there are other people that are realizing their dreams and things are opening up and it's the diversity of experiences that we are having these days is really phenomenal and this this is Uranus Uranus is the planet of extremes it's really it's really you know bringing up yeah our differences and and that the differences are what well Uranus is bringing up the truth are we in alignment with truth are we aware of truth are we aware of and willing and wanting to follow the truth despite 
all problems, issues. This is what our Sabian symbol has to do with today, resiliency. The key word is, are we resilient? You know, when the wind blows us, you know, off the mountain or we get slapped in the face or our, you know, our dog passes or our, you know, love, you know, fumbles. Are, are we resilient? Will we bounce back? Will we come back? And this is where our courage and our faith and our hope pulls us through challenging times and helps us to keep seeking for the truth. That's what Uranus wants. That's what Aquarius wants. That's what this new moon is about. Nothing matters but finding the truth, seeing the truth, realizing the truth, living the truth, being the truth. I, yeah, Aquarius and Uranus, it's just truth, 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 truth. <laughs> Whoosh. So the new moon happening, setting the tone for this month. Are you ready? Ikes. It is a disappointed and disillusioned woman courageously faces a seemingly empty life. The keynote is the capacity to meet emotionally upsetting experiences in human relationships with strength of character and personal integrity. The man who manages vast and complex business enterprises most often reaches power and achieves success because of his ability to deal with crisis and temporary reverses of fortune. At the emotional level, we now see a woman confronted with sharp disappointment and forced to face the vanishing of cherished illusions, presumably in terms of a close personal relationship. She has to learn to manage such crises, which are really tests of inner strength and personal compassion. We all have within ourselves the power to learn through emotional crisis. But like any other faculty, it needs development. This symbol urges us to develop resilience under adversity. There's a whole lot to this Sabian symbol. There's a whole lot to this new moon. There's a whole lot to, like I said, this Saturn moving through Pisces. This compassion this opening of the heart, you know, this is what can bring people together. Compassion through crisis, through challenge, through adversity. This helps us to strengthen our will, to strengthen our resolve. These tests of our character so this week, you know, Mars is coming up to Pluto. It, you know, it, it can be a very powerfully challenging person, condition, relationship. I know I'm jumping on a plane tomorrow just in time for Mars conjunct Pluto. It's, it is, a, you know, the Kundalini. It is, you know, our root chakra, Pluto, coming up through Mars. Mars is associated with the solar plexus. Okay, and this is just like, it's time to power through. It's time for us to maybe be tested by spirit. Are we strong? Are we resilient? Will we bounce back? How bad do we want this life? 
How bad, how much do we love ourselves, feel worthy, so that we don't give up on ourselves, we don't lose faith in ourselves, that we can pull ourselves through adversity, that spirit is with us. So, yeah, I, I, was, I was really thinking, I was really contemplating, you know, my future. I'm thinking of making some changes in my life, maybe even having to do with the Pele report <laughs> and the frequency. Because, you know, yeah, there's just a lot on our plates right now. I feel it, and I have a lot on my plate. I know you have a lot on your plate. This is a time where we are all getting initiated. And we've all got a lot on our plate. And it's time. You know, it's time to choose. It's time to pick. This has to go. That has to go. Maybe I'm overcommitted. Maybe I'm, I've overspent. Maybe I'm overstretching. I'm overextending myself. You know, this Pluto Mars, Pluto Mercury, Pluto Venus, it's, it's, it's time. You know, you can either give it up or it can get taken away. Uh, you know, you, you know your health, your money, your love, uh, you know, your pet, I, anything. Anything can happen. And so it's really time to focus. You know, this, this Uranus, Ur, Uranian energy, this Plutonian energy is like we need to focus on why we are here. Why were we born? What is your deepest soul intention? This is what you want to put your time, your energy, your attention, your money, your... You've got to... And then you have to trust that if something leaves your life, it was not a part of that intention. So, you know, I know I have, I've really struggled, you know, wanting to be free uh, in my life. And I've, I've really, you know, taken steps, and done a lot of things. And, and, and even understanding freedom, that is what, you know, this week's mantra is about today. Because Aquarius and Uranus is about liberation. It is about freedom. But here's the tricky thing, just exactly what is freedom? You know, when we seek to define freedom, very often it's confused with license. I just have a license to do whatever it is I want to do. But, you know, I'm, I'm really, uh, uh, if we deepen our understanding through astrology of Uranus and Aquarius, and what freedom and liberation is really, truly about. What we want to do is we want to open space and time in our future. Aquarius and Uranus rule the future. We want to open space and time for spirit to work with us to work through us, for us to be spirit realized, to discover the truth. This is surrendering to freedom. So let's look at the mantra here. Let me see if I can remember it. <laughs> Good God. Freedom is not just doing whatever you want to do, but letting go of ego control so spirit can have her way with you. I want to encourage you this week, this month, with this new moon, Free up your schedule. Free up your time. Free up your commitments. 
make that commitment to spirit, to the divine, to self-realization. This is what Saturn and Neptune and Pisces are asking of us. This is what Mars Pluto is asking for us. It's almost like returning to source, returning to the one, returning to love, and letting go of people, places, things, projects, ideas. Uh, what, you know, it's just like letting go like a rocket soaring into space, lets go of its fuselage, right? We, we have set a direction and we are gonna go and now we're kinda out in space and we need to just like release. And in that release, there is trust. We're letting go of illusions. We're, we're letting go of fantasies. We're letting go of distractions. We're letting go of preoccupations. And we're getting honed. We're, you know, we're getting tumbled in the gem rock tumbler of life to shine us and to turn us into the beautiful, beautiful diamonds, gems, and pearls that we are. We're going to come out of this shining, but it's going to take a little tumbling. <laughs> so hang in there as we, you know, really deal with uh, just about anything can come up this week and this month. Uranus is sudden, unpredictable events. Mars Pluto can be, you know, violent, uh, death, destruction, removal. I, I mean, there is, it, this, this can be a very intense week and a very intense month. And besides a lot of intensity, there can also be a tremendous amount of clarity and a tremendous amount of advancement and a tremendous amount of you know, really seeing the way, the truth, and the light. Freedom is not just doing whatever you want to do, but letting go of ego control so spirit can have her way with you. May spirit have her way with you. And may you feel into, enjoy, smile, and embrace what spirit has in store for you without resisting, getting angry, holding on to what needs to go too long and feeling ripped off or lost. No, 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 no. Just Surrender. Namaste. Aloha. So much love.